You see my screen? Yeah. Ian, Doge of War. Who's coming in? Right on. I kind of wanted to start actually today just with the week ahead. Um, I post this in the market outlook, but yesterday's or not yesterday, last Friday's. Previous week. Cool. Last Friday's non farm payroll. This guy is the one that will always determine kind of like the whole course of the month, every month. Uh, this ad popping up here. Let me get out of here. Let's see if I can drill into these numbers. But so we have, there's ADP and there's this non farm payroll. They both track jobs, um, and ADP doesn't have visibility to public markets. So it's they do like payroll for all the private companies, and they were expecting a lot better numbers. Um, so the difference between them and this right now, for sure, is government jobs. So really, government jobs are not are not coming back online. Uh, able to really. Where is the raw numbers? Uh, but well, you guys can find it later on if you want to look for it. Um, but there was a lot of other stuff that looked actually really good. Like there's more jobs, um, definitely in the services sector. Uh, and it, it, it really wasn't nearly as bad as it looked like it was just on the headline. So I think that, generally speaking, the market's going to probably digest that for a while um, as they drill into it. But anyways, so we're going to have a whole lot today. Um, Tuesday, we have Jolt, which is the job opening, um, current job openings, and we have some 10-year auctions. So I think that's going to affect probably mortgage uh, interest rates. Wednesday, we have or CPI. So um, since the non-farm payroll number was kind of iffy, I think a lot of people are going to start looking at this more frequent data. This uh, core CPI is, is inflation. So uh, consumer price index X food and energy is core, which is really weird because their I mean, core is like pulling out all the important stuff, <laughs> what we spend the most of our money on. Um, it takes all of that out, and that is actually the number that the Fed looks at the most. Um, I think that the non form payroll number that came out initially, you know, it was like, oh, well, we're not doing as good as we thought we were. So, therefore, interest rates won't be going higher um, since we still need some stimulus. Uh, and that, that was the first reaction on the market. That would be good for tech because tech is highly leveraged generally. Um, but then as you looked into the report, it was like, well, actually, it was really mostly just government public agencies that are hurting. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's a little bit of toss up. And then the energy trade kind of towards the end of the day on Friday was pretty evident that that went um, right back on track. So Wednesday, we have a big, big day. What's up, man? Was correct, yeah. Just and just looking at the week. So Wednesday, I think we're gonna have big turning point day. We have FOMC minutes, so that's always um, a big market mover. It's it's delayed data though, so um, it's not new news. But for whatever reason, it it does move the market. So we have core CPI Wednesday, FOMC minutes, and actually a thirty year bond auction. So I would expect rates to be flying around like crazy. So maybe we get a little run towards the beginning of the week and then Wednesday morning, it starts to get, I would expect pretty choppy. We also have producer price index. So core CPI is the measurement that the Fed looks at. It's, it's inflation. So if you don't know what core CPI is, that's what that is. That's what does the consumer inflation rate look like today? Consumer price index. Um, and they're taking out 
food and energy, which is like gas and food, unfortunately. <clears throat> um, but producer price index actually is pretty important to you. So I think a lot of people are going to be looking at this. We get this producer price index on Thursday. Producer price index is the uh, manufacturing, like where we buy our goods and services from. This is their inflation rate. So if let's say, you know, a manufacturer is getting a high inflation rate, they're, they're having lower margins that would affect, let's say, expected earnings as we, as we move forward into earnings season and who are they going to pass this on to? So that would, if we see a high number here, but not a high number here, I mean, yeah, the, the, the back half of this week, I don't see a whole lot of optimism, but I think we can run the front half for sure. Uh, we also get initial jobless came, uh, claims Thursday. Retail sales this on Friday. Retail sales will actually tell us a lot about um, what's going on for the actual consumer. So we'll have like this consumer price index Wednesday. And I think so we have a 4% consensus and prior. So this number here, honestly, if with this funky non-farm payrolls, I'm looking, you know, if, if we get... If we get something higher than 4%, then that's actually going to be, I think that's going to be pretty rough. So here's where we were. So we were coming down. And so this is that whole transient, you know, is inflation going to go away or is it here to stay? That's, that's the question, right? So we were tracking 1.6. The Fed's goal is 2. Um, all of a sudden, 3, 3.8, 4.5. 4 4.3, this is like, okay, well, you know, it kind of looks like we're going down. This was this this jump was totally unexpected, um, and we got a four this last this last time. So if we get higher than four on this next core CPI on Wednesday, I think that that could spook a lot of a lot of people in the market. So definitely definitely want to watch. And we have these FOMC minutes same day. It's going to be a tough one for sure. So I, I probably will not be in the market here. Um, probably a very light trading week. Luckily, we have earnings uh, kicking off officially on Thursday, but we'll have our first um, earnings trade session, real first session on Wednesday. And hopefully we have some trades this time. Um, so back to Friday. So we have retail sales Friday, not including autos. Uh, import price index this goes to like manufacturing um, retail sales retail sales consumer sentiment this was a funky one it got a little bit better last time but anything over 70 is fine i don't think we'll see anything lower than that and i actually do look at this bigger hughes rig count so this is how many rigs are open um and produce an oil here in the U.S. So we have 433 right now. We'll get a new number on Friday. If that number goes up, then supply will go up. I think oil's had an amazing run. Um, probably my my largest core position in actual accounts uh, is OAH, but but we had a big move. So I'm trimming, and you know I wouldn't be surprised if it just kind of stalls out for a little bit. So I think this is really what we're looking at. Uh, consumer price index producer, this is, man, keep hearing about all these boats stuck at, and like, it was like 60 boats anchored in LA, not even able to dock yet. Um, just the supply issues. Uh, we'll see how that rolls through to retail sales. So I think that's gonna be a big story. Um, Anyways, let's get to just take a look really quick. So TLT, this is 10 year bond. I have a couple 20 year, 20 year bond, a couple lines. Red is 200 day, yellow 150, blue is the 50 day moving average and the gray is the 20. I think we're just going to be a little range bound here. Well, but this is the one if the price of the bond itself goes down, 
that means that rates are actually going up. So the lower this is, you know, that's that's not the greatest for tech. Uh, you'd like to see a little bounce, and it looks like it should. But we'll we'll see. And then this is uh, I got crude oil here. This is actually these are thirty minute candles too. So these are crude oil futures. I think super important. So if oil's going up, I mean, look, we hit 82, 82 bucks a barrel this morning. And it looks like it's uh, a little tired. So let's take a look. We can get something going on here. Got to use a channel. So I think this is important right now because this will be also a little gauge on inflation too. Yeah, so if I just use a channel, we're a little extended. So I'd expect that we come back in a little here. Although Devin and, and what have you, good morning, good open, but we'll see how it plays out. Wow, Bitcoin. 50, 58 was like my number. That's what we were getting on. Uh, look at that. Hello. Yeah. About Bitcoin, what do you think is Bitcoin? Whoa, is that Jerome? It is, Rob. Yeah. Long time no see. Yeah. Long time no see. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you know, to me for the, the rest of the year and then some would not surprise me at all before it decides it could go either way. It could go down. If this was like a little cup and handle, I, I would not be surprised for this to come all the way down here uh, if it breaks this 16 and change. 1680. Yeah, and you can go to where the last deep drop was. Yeah. Where there's also some accumulation. Yeah, so that, that would be, for me, that's right around. And they have so much money Here. just to do whatever they want. I mean, so yeah, this is just perfect. technicals, right? Like, the, the fundamental story here is still, I think, evolving, right? And I think that people just didn't have the exposure to what could potentially be uh, displacement for different technology, and, and they are just, you know, hurrying up to get exposure here. So maybe a short push. Uh, I also think that um, in terms of fundamentals, I think that crypto has finally been more accepted also by the mainstay players. Oh, 100%. So I think that that brings a huge amount of demand as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay, so I'm just going to zoom in. This is S&P. I'm on a 30 minute chart here. This little green box is the average week, a move on an average week. I got, uh, let's see, actually, I was playing with a couple. This is an average month. And I'm taking a 14 a day or 14. Uh, unit average so this is average month it's the average move of the last 14 months average week the average move of the last 14 weeks this week is here so that was per day did you take any of copper fcx <laughs> did i did i did i did i did Man, because on the, the next day after, like at the th 34 mark on FCX, there's like a beautiful, it's a simple uh, retest. Yeah, it was pretty epic. So I feel like this, I'm still tinkering with these uh, indicators. I'm probably better just to use an actual spreadsheet to get your averages. I don't know how much I trust that one, this indicator. <clears throat> Let me get my old. So definitely, I trust this one. So here, I was looking on a 30, this little orange line, where everybody really just kind of jumped in. Let me see, can I extend this last? No, I cannot. Yeah, and this is just slightly over what our 436 level was. So this 436 level is still going to be major play. So as long as we're over this 436, I I, I, I don't really have a, a reason to be super bearish, as weird as that sounds. Um, but it's not that far away. I don't have a reason to be bullish either, though. So that puts me in the neutral camp and continue doing what we've been doing, really. And that's just, you know, uh, iron condors, things like that, I think will continue to be the way to go. We, it's October. We have monthly expiration this week for options. So volatility is going to be elevated. Um, you know, people say September is bad, but I honestly feel like October could very well be worse. Um, so let's say as long as we're over this 435, 436 level on the downside, I'm staying neutral uh, up to, and I have this, what is this, 445 level now where really the kind of the sell off began right around here. Let me just tag this guy. Where does that put us? Yeah, about 445. So this week's range, I'm looking somewhere between 436, 445 on the upside. Um, and if we do come back down to tag the bottom of this little trend line, I, I 
right now, I would probably see that as more of a buying opportunity short term. Um, if it bounces, so if it bounces, I'm looking on a one hour time frame at minimum. Um, sorry, I got all these, and we're looking for you know three full candles completely above the the one candle that's bouncing. So at least half the day uh, holding clear above whatever the support line was. If it's 436, that's fine. Uh, but absolutely no no rush to get in here. I'm not jumping in right there. You know, it could be a whole day, you know. Um, but as long as it's, it would be on this one. So completely <coughs> above 436. I'd like to see it hold that this week. And then I'd, I'd feel a little bit more comfortable, but, uh, but anyways, this is my range on the S&P for this week. So maybe up to 445 high end, and we want it to hold 435. Steven, do you have a different level here? Maybe on the upside or downside? Mm -hmm. down. uh, for Spy? Yeah. Uh, 436 to 431. I couldn't quite hear exactly what you're saying because it keeps cutting out for me. I don't know. I think I've had internet issues again. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see the 44. I have a little line, 442. So you're also cutting out for me, just in case. Yeah. I'm going to restart my computer. No, no, no. no it's just for me, though. Oh, oh, okay. okay. It, it's cutting out for you, too. Cut out. It's just Jason. Jason, you cut out sometimes. Like oh, okay. Hey, if you guys if you guys have recommendations on new microphones, I'm all for it. This audio situation has been pain in my butt. I got a Yeti Blue, so you guys know something that's better. Send it out. Send it on over. Shoot me a link. Whatever. But yeah, hopefully this is still working. So yeah, I, ha I have the 442, which is 441 was last week's high, and also the initial breakdown on the middle of September, as well as late September. So I see that level too. Um, 445 would be pretty bullish, and that would be bouncing up off of that 441 if we were to get there. That would be. Man, Wednesday's just Wednesday's just in our way. I I don't, Wednesday's kind of sketchy to me. There's too much going on that could totally change the story and the sentiment. Um, cues, same kind of thing. I think my purple box is a weekly range, and so cues on the downside. We actually three fifty seven. I don't know the, the number on if it was the NASDAQ conversion. So 357 right here is where I'm looking at. Okay, buyers decided, hey, look, I'm buying this. And it pushed it completely up, kind of came down. This is 358. Let's see if you could move this up. Yeah, 358. Came down, hit it, and bought it again. So I like that level as critical support. I mean, up to resistance here, same thing. So 368 and change, almost 369. Let me says move it, move my gain up. Okay. <clears throat> well, it's recording, so hopefully we can fix any audio issues. That is what I'm looking at on the queue. So not 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 an uptrend by any means on the cues either let's see yeah this is somewhat similar I don't, might be a little stretch yeah i can't i can't get bullish on tech just yet there are some pieces in tech that look like they're breaking out but as a whole, not quite there for me. Get back to 30. 30 minute candles. Cool. 
so industrials look better than the rest to me and this is completely over the downtrend got our little fake out already a little gappy but here's where i'm seeing that they jumped in so right around this 345 level May let me know if the audio is any better at all. Okay. Still breaking up? Uh, not like last 10 seconds. Ooh. Might just be connection. I think it was connection, but yeah, already in the 10 seconds you could notice a difference. It shows me that. Yeah, 100%. Uh, okay. <laughs> Shit. We'll take donations for microphones. But I'm sure, like the the Apple headphones, I'm sure those work. Like, it's gotta be. They don't have to be too sophisticated. I feel. We'll see. Yeah. So, um. Anyways, so industrials. I'm looking here. It was four forty three forty five downside, three fifty upside, and this looks like it could reverse course and go a little bit higher um, from here. IWM. So IWM, I'm looking. So these are all these moving averages, and and we have these iron condors on IWM, but man, they're all getting super tight, and these are locked on the daily. So above the fifty, this is the one fifty. Above the two hundred, this this guy will arrive. This iron condors. I don't know if I want to put another one on just yet. Because it looks like, you know what, I'm going to, we, we can't keep, stay the course. When, when this starts to break, we'll, we'll know. But, but for now, this is the kind of range I'm looking at somewhere here, 220 on the downside. And if it does happen to break above, call it 230, that's the only point I would really Consider doing a different trade. Let me see this. Here's our, yeah, our condors. Yeah, our, con our condors will pay us for a while. So that's not that far. So we'll get paid all the way up here. So that's fine. No need to change anything there. <clears throat> Second chart. Ooh, I thought this was going to look a little bit better having the open that we did. But so left to right, top to bottom, retail, semiconductors, oil services, healthcare, energy, financials. This is the commodity index and then tech sector. So um, retail had a little bounce this morning, but... I think this 200 day is holding it up. I'm going to put this 87, maybe a little higher. I don't want to see this guy hold below or go below this guy, not below that. Semis was kind of similar. So semis, I saw this, this little push down one, two, three four times recently. So, I mean, as long as these guys can stay above these levels, I am okay holding. Not going to be super bullish just yet, but uh, I could see around 272 on the semis, I would be trimming um, just from a trading range perspective until we can push above that. But a little squeezy there oil services this was uh this was good this little tag 165 man us jerome all day please move i had something just pop up right now anyways 
anyways. Also fair, huh? What's that? Working also fair. Yeah. No, this is this is this is I'm at my first profit target. But I, I mean I took a little off. Really not a lot. Not a lot at all. I mean oil prices are still like expected to be above sixty five dollars for like a couple of years. Oh yeah. I mean what eighty two today. I think if we get to a hundred dollars a barrel, I'll probably trim a little bit more. Uh, but I actually figured out way too late why that was, but it's actually pretty obvious when you actually think about it, which is that the energy transition uh, transition is going to be huge. Capital is it's very capital intensive. It's going to be like seven oh, right. trillion. Years. Yep. So what kind of companies? Would want to shift their spending from their current market into that, well, and yeah. I that oil companies is a very very likely uh, response to that. That many oil companies are now focusing investments onto green projects instead. Um, also, from like a or from like a perspective of like the outside look of the company and stuff like that as well. Yeah. And also, it's uh, just because they see that's where the future is, and they have to start changing now. Um, so we're at that kind of awkward moment where we are going to have uh, happen with other products where they're about to die out, but they're still completely a necessity for the moment. So it's a very interesting question of how you regulate the supply and demand for such a situation. Yeah, I think who was it? Exxon started a, a initiative and for clean energy initiative, right? And mm -hmm. had upped the amount of money that they were going to dedicate to the project and, and jp morgan like immediately downgraded them and you're like well to your point you know that they're the transition is going to take a really long time but if if the companies are trying and while they're trying you know everyone's like well i don't want your business anymore or i don't think you're a good business like what what's what, what does that say so, you know, it may, yeah, I it's going to be a long time. Some people are like overvalue or undervalue thinking ahead mm -hmm. and adapting and being able to adapt. And some people rightfully probably view it as a risk, probably because you're making an investment in something you don't have and you're taking away money from things that you know work. So I guess there's also a risk factor in there, which, which is, which agrees with the down, like a downsizing, but then there's also just, Thinking about in ten years, will they be able to survive like this? Yeah. And, uh, so that's. Uh, you have to have like, that much longer view, for sure. Exactly. So I think just these inside these mini sectors here for me, um, I'm just looking across the board for sure. You know, oils, it's energy, most bullish, no question. Um, financials would be second in line aside from let's say commodities, but um, so commodities would be into your FCX to your point, NUE, Nucor for steel that we have this uh, end of the month uh, infrastructure deal that will likely push that sector a little bit higher. Uh, financials, I, I'm a little weary of right now just because they're gonna be first at bat when it comes to earnings and they're coming in a little hot. So I could see financials having a great first half of the week. Um, but then turning turning that whole gain right back in uh, as they start reporting retail. And then the inflation trade, right? Finan yeah, so so financials is, um, here's where it gets weird. So when they have earnings, they're going to report the last quarter, which doesn't include this higher rate um, run that we're having. So that won't be in there, but by the same time, that's not what's going to move a stock either. Uh, what what will move the stock is is the outlook moving forward, right? So even if they beat it, beat expectations, that doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter at all. Um, it's going to be all about their forecast. So depending on on what those look like and what they have to say about you know how higher rates will be affecting their business and for what period of time. 
that that's going to be what will or will not move the stock. I think uh, what was it? BlackRock's probably probably BlackRock, Morgan Stanley. We can look into a couple. Are probably some of the stronger ones across the board. Actually, the stronger ones would be anyone really that has. I would almost say trading revenue too. So BLK. Yeah, BlackRock is just. Uh, sorry, we're testing a testing a, a potential trade system here for you guys. So you'll see these funny funny borders. <clears throat> but yeah, so daily. I jeez. Now that I look at this, the daily is pretty good right off this 200. That's a big break. So th this one is not like JP Morgan that's coming in super hot. This this is viable to me. We're way above here. Wow. I'm kind of happy I'm looking at this right now. Yeah, this looks like a nice clean break on BlackRock today, pushing. Um, so just careful. We got we got earnings coming. So if it comes in hot, well, it could pull back to that 840 level again, which would still be fine. And that's as long as it holds that. If you're investing, not trading. If you're investing uh, and not options, then you'll you'll be fine. <clears throat> JP Morgan was another one. This one, yeah, so this is a totally different chart. We're way hot on JP Morgan. I don't want to be buying this here. Coming into earnings. This is this is uh this is a setup just to fall straight back to this 160. Potentially. We'll see. Earnings uh technical analysis kind of goes out the window on earnings. Not kind of, it really it absolutely goes out the window. Um, it's all about historical moves, um, technical analysis, whole, you know, efficient market theory, whatever you want to call it is about the price reflecting a fundamental story, sentiment, etc. in, in the price, but on the actual earnings event, that's when all that stuff will change. So if the fundamental story changes, it's going to supersede any technicals that you're looking at. So don't 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 mess with technicals through earnings or trust them. Just my two cents. <clears throat> I got out of the corner of my eye. I'm looking at a firm kind of wanting to break again. Look at this all time high firm. This goes in the watch list. So I'm just to give you guys a quick preview on this system. This is a standard deviation channel. So one, two standard deviations for options. So when an asset is inside this green band, that's go for calls because this will tell you that IV is actually expanding and you'll have uh, exponential returns. If it's in between right here, right here, right here, you do not want to be in options. You want to be a net seller of options. Um, on the red side, that would be puts. For right now, that's all I can give you. We have some moving averages that are kind of coded to give you oh, an extra little shading area. So when it's double shaded like that, that's that's good, right? If it breaks down below here, you want to be out. Right there. That's how that system is going to work for you for an indicator system. <clears throat> but just quick and dirty. Yeah, this guy looks like it. So we were looking at selling calls. At least Ryan was asking about it earlier. And earlier, this was looking like it was going to be in between these bands. So if it stayed in between these bands, that that is exactly where you want to be selling cover calls. But right now it looks like it's going to try and re-enter. It is not there yet, it hasn't closed. So not quite. 
Yeah, not quite, but very close. If I'm selling cover calls here, I, I will, let's, let's take a look at the chain. Right now, just technically, if this is above 140, I'd still take a bullish view. I don't want to be, it's not an active breakout here. You want to, you want to have something like this where you're in it. This is what we hit last week. This is what good looks like. This is not this to be clear. So this is not buy calls, hurry up and run. No, this is, this is that we don't have that here. So right now I'm looking at 6,000 volume on the 145 call for this Friday. What's that trading for? Ooh, that's trading for 500 bucks. 145. That's a very nice premium. You could sell that. I'm also looking at the 150. So if you're selling the 145, 150 credit spread, what are you getting? Buck 85 for this week. That's not enough juice to me to sell that. They may be buying that. Um, but for you guys, wait till it's in a um, more of an uptrend. So wait till it's above this 143 level before you jump in and do anything super bullish. 143, yeah, I'll call it 145. Can you please look at the alphabet when you have uh, some time? Yeah, we'll take a look. So Google, I like, it's investment territory for me. So this, yeah, daily. I oh, mean, we're just getting a ton of these setups here. So same kind of setup. So break, we're clear above here and here. So here's my second level. I'm just gonna duplicate this They're right here. So this is a clean break that you wanna see. So I, I mean, for now, at least to 2,900, for sure, 2,890. 2,890 is where the sellers really stepped in before. And it couldn't get above that. So for now, I'm here, maybe trim a little bit, 20, 2890. What is this return from here to here? So you're there, two and a half percent. If it breaks this, that's 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 good. I think if it breaks that, that's fine. But you'd want to be able to enter on a retest for me. Uh Right here, so I'm still long, be long. Just have this 2900, 2890 level in the back of your mind for sure. You zoom in on some shorter time frames. Here's a four hour. This is nice. This is a nice cross right here, 2050 day. If you're a moving average guy, we are in. The channel for the system going higher. So these purple lines are weekly. So 2870 this week. I could be looking at a 2900 calendar. It's going to be a little pricey. But I, I like that level on all fronts. I mean, a prime entry would have been last week, but that was a quick gap. So this is your best second opportunity for sure. 15 minute, I stick with 30. Yeah, this still looks good. Where I go, where I go. <clears throat> I had a couple others I do want to take a look at. So Tesla started pushing this 800 level is tough for these guys but as long as we're above here 780 slow slow trudge higher I think here I, I could still you could still sell upside calls all the way up to what is that 
eighty. I'd probably sell it. Eight fifty. This might be. Yeah, I'm not in a rush to do anything. If you're selling puts, you want to kind of hug this downtrend, this uptrend line here. So selling puts would be more along the seven fifty level to me. One hour. Now it looks good. Yeah, it's been tight. This consolidation is getting pretty tight. Before I go super long, actually, Stephen watches this more than anybody else, I think. Man, I should have gone this. I can't believe I slept on that. I had some great levels as well, but I completely slept on it. Yeah, it happens, man. Yeah, this this eight hundred level. I mean, it's it's got to break. It's got to break above eight hundred. Otherwise, like, how many times can it test? It it looks like it's gonna break, but I don't need to be in it now. I don't need to be in it until I get a, you know, an open and a close above eight hundred clean. Uh, this is just if you're if you're if you're buying up here. I mean, your support is down at seven sixty. So you're trying to push for a break. It's it's more risky to be buying here now for a push up because the quick fall down would take it would actually absolutely take you straight down here to around 760 so you buying here now is not not what you want to do from a risk perspective you absolutely want to wait till it breaks yeah at this level i'm really not interested in yeah. taking tesla's all into it yeah really breaks above the 100 and even comes back Right, that's right. So a full open yeah, that, and a full close. Or back down to 760. Yeah. Is are the only two things I'm, I'm looking at playing on Tesla just because, yeah, it's still an uptrend, but if you look at I mean, down to the smaller time frames, it just it will rip some of you out so fast that you're going to have yeah. big swings. So I, yeah, I think, you know, for me, I was a seller of this 800 level on a call credit spread for, I don't know. I mean, these two, this is what last week, right? Um, I, I don't really want to try my luck again, <laughs> but um, so typically in my mind, the more times that that level gets tested, the weaker that that level is, but just the same, it doesn't mean it's gonna, it does not mean that it's gonna break. So they're picking it up around 780 right now. Anybody that picked it up at 780, if, if 800 fails again and then it breaks below 780, don't think for a second that this guy good, isn't going to immediately go straight down to 760 and then all the way down to 720 one more time. Um, you know, they're just buying it here around this 780, hoping for a push. And if it doesn't make it, they're out. So quick money, uh, but that's that's your risk. Just know it's just know that that's what it is. So I, I mean, I'd be happy to be a, a put seller around seven fifty. You can get enough premium there. Um, I don't know that I want to. Yeah, I'm 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 very much with you. This is a no touch until you have a clean break, completely through, a full open and a full close above eight hundred. Yeah, and I mean, I feel like I'm looking more at like 805. Yeah, to be clear. Speaking so, of, let's get to let's get to an interesting one. So, I know. So we are. Well, I got all this stuff on these charts. Get out of here. Too much. Just give me something raw. Okay, so. 325 was our level that we were looking at. Get down to a one hour. Still is, you know, this is the first push and hold above 325, but we're not, I mean, it pushed down once, pushed down twice, and they bought it. So honestly, I'm still in the camp. Like, I want to see this clear. Before I'm 
328. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, 328.80. Um, because I'm, I'm just not seeing, let me add volume here. I'm just not seeing the kind of buyers that I would want to see. And this is, the, it is the second break. And it does look good. God, that stupid thing is cracks me up. So your volume point, I mean, if you look at the opening volume for like the first like 15, 30 minutes, it's like half of what the opening volume was all last week. That, yeah, so that's... I mean, it's, it's, it's this, nothing. Let me see what we got. 690K. Yeah. So there's there's not a ton of sellers. That's what we can say. Right? Which is good. Um, but doesn't mean that it's going to go higher. We need, we need buyers, new, we need active new buyers, and they're probably waiting for that same level or something similar. This is the first break of this larger downtrend. If you were to draw it this way, which is the way I am going to draw it, um, I know that probably a lot of people will likely draw, I don't know, something like that, maybe a little channel. I think I think the point too, no matter how you draw that yeah. down trend, it's roughly in the same area, regardless of how you draw it. Yeah. So this is this is the level that we definitely wanted to see it hold. And this is typically let's see. This is good. I'm not in a rush to buy it. Yeah, I, so the the only way for me to get like definitely not hit by what could be a pretty epic fake out, this this very well could be an epic fake out and just break straight back down to 300 plus um, before bouncing again or even 270, which, you know, that would look something like this before this little section. Holding, holding, and then pushed all the way down to 70. Um, is a new high. So we just don't have it. Once we get a new high, and and again, I'll look at this 280 to or 328-ish level. And if you want to be super ultra cautious, you could go, you could go higher. I mean, the upside on this, it, you know, a couple bucks, you know, between 320 and 328, let's say, let's say 10 bucks, it, you know, your upside is significant. So to hold out to, for 10 bucks to be absolutely sure for a potential 45% upside, I think is, is, is not a big deal. So let's just give it a little bit longer and keep this level in mind for right now. <clears throat> that is where I am. Um, if you had a, a put on the F SPY at 440, would you, and it was to expire on the 15th of October. Oh, you still have that? I still have that. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> so you have time value, right? So every day that you go through, you, you have time value, and every day that passes, you lose time value, right? Mm -hmm. So this this October 15th... Um, no time value. There's there's four days of time value, right? right. It's not a lot. It's 400 bucks. Um, and the, the limit's 440, so that's pretty fucking close. I think we can have a little bit more of a, I think we're coming down to your 436 level. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, the, the levels matter, right? So, so hold on to it. And as we get set your own alerts, right? So if it starts to bounce off here, that's fine. I, I would sell it. Um, and then if it breaks down below, I would look towards November mm -hmm. to buy something 
Uh, and, and again, VIX volatility index is, is very low here at 18. So it's not a bad, it's not a horrible time to be buying protection. Um, I, was, I was thinking about it, otherwise buying some now. Yeah. Um, you, so you don't want to double down. So, so if you were to pay extra for it now, because the thing is you're going to need to buy more time. So you might be, you knowing your the one that I have and just get the stocks, get the SPY and then hedge a little bit more. No. So since you own a put that gives you the option to sell uh, SPY at 440 is different. Um, when you own puts, you're going to be shorting it. If so, if, if that option expires in the money, you will be short, um, a hundred shares of SPY at 440 each. <clears throat> I think it's the other way around. Is, no, it, is it, is it one that I'm going to buy them? So you'll no. know what the rate is and that he uses, I think I did the opposite now. No, the buyer. no. So it's, it is the opposite for calls, but not for puts. Um, so for puts, when you sell a put, you're making an agreement to buy. But when you buy a put, you're making an agreement to sell, and therefore you will be short 100 shares. So of, did I sell a put? No, you bought it. Well, you know what? You okay. should. You, you so should. It, it'll give you. It, it'll give you the right to sell them, but your broker will borrow those shares from someone else at whatever the current market value is. So you can sell them at a higher price if it gets executed and it's and it's by expires at like four thirty nine. So it'll borrow shares from someone at four thirty nine and then you'll have those shares to sell them at four forty nine. <coughs> okay. And I mean if spy goes down that's good for you, right? But um but for right now that's that doesn't have a a lot of time value in it. If you were to double down on protection, um, it, so that will protect you more, believe it or not, than a, even though it's only 300 bucks, but that short dated option will protect you just as much as a December put option. So like a December, and I'm looking at the chain, I see a lot of, I see a good amount of volume on December 435 puts. Those are trading about eleven hundred dollars right now, eleven hundred and forty dollars, um, and they have about a forty-five delta, give or take. Now, in comparison, right, your October fifteenth four forty put is trading significant. So it was eleven forty over there, and it's three hundred twenty-five dollars for that October put. That October put has a delta hedge, or you know, it'll move. It, the delta is 54 so 10 points higher really 10 points more protection than the december put that's trading for almost mm, almost three times as much does that make sense so it's cheaper protection yeah um it would have been better to sell it before um but do you want to double down on something that's three times more expensive for, you know, equal or less of a protective position. That's, that's the question. Whereas if you do get the dump down, well, that thing's going to pay you out, wait for the bounce. So if you, if you do get the dump now, go ahead, sell that, wait for the bounce and then buy, um, the December stuff, the December protection, probably around that 435. <clears throat> level so you want to go a little bit farther out um moving forward try not to hold options more than like i'd say two to three weeks to expiration is when you absolutely want to start cutting them if they're investment type uh options or or hedge positions good to know that one next time <laughs> <laughs> I'll put yeah I passed me this time. That's all right. It'll be all right. So where were we? I think upstart. Yeah. So upstart. I, I am still liking this chart today. So upstart. This is my 
our little system. This is entering the buy zone. We got across before. Cool. This is looking good. And let me just let me just take this shenanigans off for a second. I like it cleaner. Um, so we got the downtrend. We got a break, right? We're clear above what? We're clear above prior resistance now acting as support right here. And this is 308. I think Ryan was talking. He, I, I'm positive Ryan has a 320 <laughs> call for this week. But uh, what I did want to show you, so 330 would very likely be our next stop. And it looks like we're well on our way. <clears throat> but let me go take a quick look at the chain. So upstart. So when I'm doing options like this, I'm usually, it's Monday. We're just going to plan our trade for this week. I'm not really going to try and look any farther out. So this week, I got a three, almost a 3.30 target. If I look at the chain, I can see immediately, okay, so 3.20 would be an ideal option. It's at 46 delta right now. That's a $900 option, but look at that. 2100 volume today on upstart 320 call for this Friday and $1100 open 1100 open interest that's a really good volume really good open interest i can look at wow even 325 calls 700 bucks but 4000 open interest on 1400 volume so that's this little between 325 and 330 is where the volume is looks like there's couple of lottos way out in the 375 380 range i don't know why they would be looking at that maybe because it's monday they might be able to get a <laughs> a lucky break uh but for this week so these are very expensive options i don't want to be buying these outright um personally if i just look at a quick okay 320 Let's go 320 to 330 debit spread, just like this, targeting the top half of this range. That is a $10 wide spread. <coughs> Trading for about $385. Ooh, that's a toughie. That's still expensive. Um, what else can we do? When is earnings? That's a good trade. It's just it's just a little expensive. Let me see if I can find anything better. November 9th is earnings here. And what can we look at? Not a lot of volume on the fifth. Wow. I see big open interest on November monthly contracts for 390. <coughs> Sorry, I got something in my throat. 390. 390. Let me see if I can do some kind of time spread. Uh, 25 delta. 34 theta. I need a smaller delta, higher theta. 12. Ooh, that's going to be a tough one. I don't, I don't know that I can see a time spread there. So, I mean, maybe that debit spread is the right one. Maybe just a 350 call, a 330 call. QS, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that would be my first stop. 330, jeez. Steven, you see something a little bit better on this one? Uh, I'm looking at this week's chain right now. Yeah, it's busy. It's, yeah, very, it's very busy. Exactly. I mean, it looks like it looks like they have that three twenty, three thirty spread. Like just based on the, on the line, the volume, it looks like that's what they're doing. Yeah. Um, maybe just a little less than the three dollar risk roller. Yeah. 
You know, <clears throat> it's a tough one. Yeah. It's quite expensive. You know, three twenty-five. <laughs> this 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 may be one of those teachable situations. So if if I were to throw up a model on a uh, 320, 325, 330 butterfly, so buying one 320, selling two 325s, buying one 330, that butterfly, I might be able to get for like less than a hundred bucks. It's pretty widespread, but um, something like this, you absolutely have to hold. And the sweet spot here would be anywhere between 320 and 330, right? Which would be what? So 320 and 330, if I bring this range, same range, right? If it happens to land at 325, quite likely right here on Friday though, and, and again, it has to be towards the end of the week because this is a theta play. Today is the 11th. 12, 13, 14, 15. So what is this going to be? This is not look right. But it would be a Friday end of day, like $400. Is this right? 10, 14, 10, 15. Yeah. This would be anywhere between a hundred and four hundred dollars. So you have to pay under a hundred bucks. It'd be a tough one. You don't need to put this on right now. <clears throat> if you can get it cheap though, I like that. Otherwise, I don't see any volume on the put side. So maybe these calls 375. Ah, we can look at it later. I'd move on. But that, that would be my target somewhere around the, uh, you know, high 320s. Maybe you just buy a 325, 330 debit spread. So that, that, that looks more reasonable short term. 325, 330, debit spread. How are you going to offset theta here? That theta is going to crush you. Three twenty five. Yeah, three twenty five, three thirty, debit spread for this week. I am actually pretty comfortable there. Hundred seventy bucks. Oh. It's just okay. Let's find something else. But um, it looks good. Maybe a day trader. If you see the break, just outrights that 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 may very well likely be the best way to trade that one. Um, okay, I had Devin. Devin, we were on. I'm looking at a one hour. So we have forty bucks. Is going to act as resistance here that's fine I want to see this guy push a little bit higher before I open anything but I could do a debit spread or a time spread here I'd be looking more diagonal so 42 God, I hate that does that 42 upside for the week Look at that. A lot of 41s. If I look at the chain. We got 11,000 calls already today. All around, ooh, they're going pretty far. January. Really? I see a lot of January, 40, 50 debit spreads. That may not be bad. That you could hold for quite a while. Buying the 40, selling the 50. Wow. Uh, let's see. Gotta play with these. 
earnings on the second. Yeah, I, I would still say some kind of short term time spread buying a, a later dated 40 selling like a 42 call against it. A little diagonal looks good to me. Otherwise, yeah, don't need to jump on it just yet. <coughs> I think the rest of the oil sector is looking the same. Nice push this morning, but gotta wait and see. Oil's way up there, so I would not be surprised to see oil kind of pull back and take a little breather. Bank of America, we had another one. So these guys have earnings. Actually, they're one of the first up, so they have earnings on the 14th. So I think this week's contract, the October 15th, will be increasing as we get closer to the 14th. So this guy buying, I hate to say it, look at this, you're pushing this 45 level. You break at least here I have a, a cleaner. It looks to me like a little cleaner trend line. I don't need this anymore. I don't need you. You, you know, you broke. Yeah, this is like nice little consolidation. The thing with buying options on this week uh, is that you, you have volatility on your side. So if we break this, I would just honestly, I would be, I would be buying outrights right now. You can spread off. Uh, I don't know that that's going to be a big thing. Let's see what's our upside. For this week, let's see. What is that? Forty six. So call it forty five. No, forty. Yeah, it's tight. I just be going out rights actually. Forty six fifty. Forty seven. That's what the volume is. So forty five. I would just be buying outrights right now. Uh, maybe you could buy something in November. I don't see a reason to spread this off. You're not going to get a whole lot of protection at all. Probably just outright for me. So $45 calls, just, you know, one or two days. I'm, I mean, I'd be opening this maybe at close today, like at the close and then selling sometime tomorrow. That's it. Um, if I get this break, otherwise, you know, if I don't get the break and close clean above this today, I'm just gonna sit on my hands and pull it back up. Take a look tomorrow morning. Tuesday morning, Tuesday morning, this pushes up. I want to wait for the second hour to continue, and then I would be free and clear. But earnings coming up, first on deck, high beta here. I think probabilities are good. You have a little protection to give you a little edge um, in terms of volatility on some quick calls. ACs, JP Morgan, OQS. Oh, I was getting crazy alerts this morning. Uh, hate to look at this guy. It was intriguing, but I think I'm gonna pass. Just wanna put it on your radar. So we have this downtrend broke, holding above this level here. Oh, you really can't see that. Sorry, guys. Above this level here, but I need this guy. If you're thinking about it, I need this guy to clear. So this is like a Roku kind of situation. Looks really good. Give it a minute because that could be a fake out also. So wait for a new high. 
no need to rush over 24 if you're not already in it. Yeah, can you think about the semiconductors? Well, actually, I heard what you said before about the semiconductors. But what do you think about Nvidia in particular? Yeah. In particular yeah. So that was on the list, absolutely. So so similar. I think I want to see. Um, so where am I here? So. I think. Really like, so NVIDIA, I have to, so just to get this out of the way, I, I'm torn on semis as a whole. And I mean, really torn because the supply chain situation, can you guys hear me? I'm messing with this connection. Could, yeah. it, it could be a really big deal. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're doing good. I mean, you got NVIDIA, you have AMD, they're Micron, Taiwan Semi. There's a lot of different options that you have technically yeah as long as you're above this kind of like initial uh supply zone here where the sellers were selling prior this is about just just over 200 um <coughs> i guess i'm my throat which reminds me of that oih like you know manipulation push down to get an entry it looks like that's what we got here um which would have been great if you didn't own it to snag it and, and i i like to say as long as we're over this two i would just call it just to be give it a little 205 as long as we're over 205 i mean this goes in the rest of the semi space where yeah we're you look good um, if your entry, if your cost is below, below that, like no reason to sell it. Um, I just, I just, I'm just so weary with all the supply chain issues. You know, it's going to be priced in, right? So, you know, for now, as long as we're pushing higher, let's draw some lines. Right, so we know, okay, the downtrend broke. So we want to kind of see where, where are we going next. So you have this. It's not super clean. You got a lot of manipulation happening here. I mean, this is a tough call, right? You just need to see it create a new high, right? So if... If you can get, uh, I'm just going to try my extended hours. So here's yesterday's close, right around that 208 level. Okay. I'm just going to, and you got to go like kind of day to day. So here's Friday open, right? Friday open is 211. And this level, I can trace back. We're getting real. Kind of nitty gritty. It's a little gappy level. If you really start to look at it, two thirteen. Yeah, two thirteen. If you're breaking above that, you're you're making new highs. I mean, it's only a couple of dollars, but that is where the last group of sellers really were. So if those sellers have been exhausted, and it can close above that. Then this looks all right. Um, it really should, if you you know, see, there's a little gap to the upside. Wow, a little tiny gap. <coughs> so I mean, for a trade, I can take this up here. Shoot, for a trade, you could take this all the way up here, maybe. I mean. <laughs> It doesn't look bad by any means. As long as it stays over here, I just have, there's, there's, I would have to have a longer time horizon on this because the, the ride can be kind of choppy. That's all I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. A lot of headwinds. But yeah, as long as it's over 204, 205, I, I would be happy owning it. Um, so maybe buy on some dips and have a tight, Tighter stop loss. 
Uh, I don't have an amazing read on this one. I think, uh, Stephen, do you have some levels on NVIDIA? Let me look it up. Sorry, I was just I was watching Boeing. Yeah, Boeing. So that's that's next chart. It's then on the chart. Right, so we're breaking out right now. Yep. Um, I am still watching that two hundred six fifty level. Yeah. And then two eighteen fifty XT is like the next big one. Two hundred six. Okay, so 206 is there, and then you got 218.50. That's a little higher. Ah, yeah, you're right there. Cool. Yeah. So he's 206. I was giving a little cushion, 205. That, that would be good if you can get a... Where were we? A close above... Yeah, above 213, you'd be happy uh, for yeah, a short term push. 100%. So, 213. I haven't looked at this at all today yet. So. Yeah. So, so, here's the kind of double top 213. Add your alert. We're looking. We have this zone, right? If we get a bounce, I need to see it clear and I need to see it come back down. And I want to see at least. Three clean candles above this 213 line. That's for me. So, and I say clean like the whole body above the line, not like on the line or one above, one below, one above, one below, like three completely clean above. Cool. So, let's see. We know this guy is moving. So here we are. Here's Boeing. This is the one Jerome refuses to buy. Um, we have been watching this level for. Oh, you're, you know, I gotta go for it. This is just the way it is. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Hey, man, our natural gas is way cheaper than yours. I, I feel bad for you. I don't know what's going yeah, on. Right? Well, we're gonna test that today. So okay. <laughs> there you go. I can hack it. Yeah. So this active breakout here, when this guy moves, it moves. I think we can take this. You can take this probably live if this is uh, uh, this is moving. Let me get drill in. Yeah, you unfortunately are at your average uh, range. So for the day, most likely this this move is probably over. <clears throat> but where will it pull back? It will pull back. I get this 230 level. Yep. Tap it right there. If you can get a bounce today, today. Uh, let's look at this chain. So day trades, shortest time to expiration. October 15th, uh, expiration week. Look at that. 13,000 volume on that. 230 call. They're not going higher, so they're not ready to be pushing this thing any further right now. That bad boy traded around mm, 250 would be an ideal catch. If it if it pushes higher. Um, otherwise, if you're in a day trade, you want to be trimming this right now, right now. Right now. Be out, be done. Um, so that would be first start. So if you're not in it, so let's say, okay, what are my next targets? So this blue line is 235. That is a resistance level that I had. Wow. I hate how that thing is. Why is it doing that? Let me sync this. It says it synced. Early chart, 235. Yeah, 230. That'd be your next target. So that 235 contract would be the one on the next push that I would be looking at. It is quite liquid. 8,000 open interest, 6,100 
volume heavy duty right there. Um, that'd be a nice round too. So I would be looking for, you want to walk through this actually, Steven? Are you in Zoom? Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, so I mean, I'm looking today, like you said, like the low love tap right on 230. 230 takes us to, this is September 29th, just the tip of that little box. Otherwise, you got this kind of zone 229. Yeah, I, really, like, I mean, I guess if you wanted to play it longer term, I could see 230 is going at the next target. Yeah, 100%. 240 would be super easy to get to, especially if we get follow through for this. Um, but this is a day trade. Real quick, low tap right off the 230. Yeah. If that fails, I can see just from today and like Thursday, Friday peaks up at like 229. Yeah. That would be my absolute. Stop loss if 230 fell. Or if we get a higher high, right? So higher high right now would be 231. Yeah. 231. I mean, and this is this would be typical of Boeing to 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 do this when you're waiting for a push. It could do it. But don't rush. It's Monday. We got earnings coming up. We got all kinds of stuff. It could be a good one. Yeah, and Boeing doesn't usually just blast through an ADR. Man, what was it Chris? Chris? I think it's Chris. Chris, I mean, that sometimes, I mean, it It, it has it happened. It, it, it kind of has the volume to do it. Look at this, this volume, right? So, okay, so uh, that's my alert. I'm not, I mean, 235 would be the one. So that that's $160. Yeah, this volume is happening now. Yeah, this is live. It doesn't injure anything. If it comes all the way back to 229, it just gave up everything that it did today. So I wouldn't even be interested in doing anything with it at 229. Yeah. So you're here for a breakout. If you cross this 232, That'd be great. 235 is the contract that you'd want to play with right now. Super liquid that, that I would want to play with. Um, but that thing is that thing is moving quickly. Um, yeah, just broke 190. We're looking at 160 before. Yeah, that's volume. Mm -hmm. So that's on the left. I have this volume profile, so you may not see it. Uh, if I can move. So yellow sellers, blue buyers, and I mean, when you look in and you see this, where the yellow just completely disappears. That's kind of like, well, you know, it's 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 just gonna keep pushing higher until you see a little yellow bar pop up. We know, hey, look at this two thirty two ish level. You're you're kind of pushing it. But that's an active breakout, no question. No question. Look at that. Where are the sellers? We've got level two here. We got charts. Yeah, orders coming in two, five, three hundred at a time. Eight hundred sixty-seven order came in, coming in. I got one sell order. Not much. A thousand just bought. Yeah. There you go. Anyways, want to move on to another one? Well, you guys can trade. It's trade time. Um, I was looking at Fastlink. Oh, yeah. 
Just nasty. Okay, so you're in the what is Tommy calls this the greed zone on our indicator. <clears throat> so, okay, okay. I just want to tap. Yeah, as long as I mean. Look, so even on super, this is one minute. They'll say, oh, I don't trade one minute. I mean, I'm sorry. I trade this shit out of one minute. <laughs> but so <laughs> higher high, lower high, right? Higher high. I mean, higher high, lower low, higher high, lower low, looking for a higher high. And I'll probably be out. But, um, but there you have it. Uh, option IV is very, very high. So you have to get this push. Otherwise, you want to just kind of be out until you can get a better entry. Look at this, 9,000 volume just showed up out of nowhere on that 240 call. What just happened? Did I miss that? 13,500 open interest. Is that the one you were looking at? Yeah. 9,000 white on 240. Well, 233. Oh, here we go. So maybe we maybe we get a nice little lunch money. Lunch money. For sure. Yay. I think that one's... This would probably be one that we could swing, depending on how this closes. It, it, we'll see. This was this break on the hourly, very big downtrend break. So if you were to swing this, where are you going? You're going to you are going to two forty. Look at that. You're going right here to two forty five. Really. call it 240 so if you want to swing it and you're in the 235s I would probably sell that 240 uh, before the end of the this little push I hate doing this now I, I have to keep this in the corner of my eye, so I'm just gonna put this chart off to the side <laughs> <clears throat> um, somebody yell at me if something happens so Netflix Netflix, Netflix, let's get all this shenanigans off the chart. Netflix, this looks like more consolidation, but very, very good. Um, I'm looking, we'll put an alert. 640 needs to be clear above, full open above, full close above. For me to start looking at this otherwise I, I i would actually be more inclined to sell some covered calls on this guy uh just because it isn't an uptrend but you're very far away from the trend line as long as it would have to break below 6 30 actually for me to do that so 
below 630, I'm feeling like the 615 level is likely next stop. So I'll set an alert there, and then I got an alert above 640. And this drops on, I'm just gonna no touch. <clears throat> but setting up the alerts. I had CRM, something I was looking at. Just good pre-announcement. Um, I think that this would be one to buck the trend of tech if it does have it, but we need to be clear above. Right there. 280. Full open, full close above 280. Set it and forget it. Otherwise, I'm going to skip. I like the materials play. That was probably the strongest chart that I can find. Freeport goes into copper which fits, we had that nasty sell-off not that long ago. And we are right back on track, having broken this, this very big downtrend. Um, yeah, 6% up today, probably double that over the last two days. Yeah, 15% in the last two days. This can take a little bit of a breather so no, don't need to rush. I got two levels. 34 would be ideal. Yeah. I don't want to see it much below that, actually. 3450. Uh, otherwise, for a real strong... 35, 35, set that, cool, or above, and above would be above the oh, 37, jeez, this might need to chill for a little bit, but oh, that one's hot, <clears throat> I had my retail guys, I thought I saw a nice little opening on some of those, you guys are still watching for Boeing for me, right, somebody yell, something happens, Broken, broken, looks good, but I need this over 456. Otherwise, if I see a rejection here, then I would probably sell some credit spreads. I think I'm good on most of the charts right now, unless somebody had something that they really wanted to take a look at. And then I'll, I'll just, I'm just gonna keep scrolling through these personally. Today, this is one that was on watch for trade time. So retail sales Friday. Um, retail has been beaten up pretty pretty bad. To twenty five on target. Finally got way down there. Poor guy needs to hold. <coughs> But if we can get above what is this? Yeah. Two thirty three. That would be something similar looking like this. And off. But I mean that's wishful thinking. We'll see. Just keeping it in the list. Uh, oh four. Still chugging along. This one looks good. Forward. So this was, if we pull, rewind a few weeks ago, and we look, okay, so forward, entry, 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 right along this trend line here. We got this break. There. And, oh, he's selling. Does that mean I need to sell? Yeah, so that look, look at that. Boeing did not did not break that top range. 
right? This is why I'm, I'm options super sensitive to price. So if you can't day trade and you're not watching it, day trading options, you can't really walk away from me. Okay, what? Still clean up trends. So we're looking at 2.30 out alert. Maybe 228. So two alerts set, forget, and run away. Ford looks good. Ford looks good this week. Um, above 15. Can't believe this bad boy is 1525 already. So couple weeks we took this. Look at that. What is that? 22%. It doesn't feel like 22%, but it is uh, in less than a month. So as long as we're holding over 1475, to me, this is still continuing higher. I like it. And our next, man, if we get to 16, I don't think we're gonna, I think we hit 1650 and, and definitely get some resistance, but uh, 1550 first level, that's the one to watch right now. If you get a breakout over that, That could be a that could be a big one. We'll see. It's moved quite a bit in a in a very short period of time, so it doesn't need to it doesn't need to get completely crazy. Activision uh, had high hopes here, man. I was liking this, I was liking it a lot. No, I'm I'm not super sold on it, but I'm not you know you know. Not giving up. <clears throat> so here's our level 76 ish and change. So we got buyers jumping in here. Yeah, 76 here once, twice, three, four, five, really five times. So it needs to bounce. <laughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, as long as we're over this level, I, I'm happy. Um, but we're close. Very, very close. I'd rather see this happen. This might need to be some more consolidation until earnings actually gets here. beginning of the month I'm just gonna quick follow up stitch fix uh, I had an alert this is not bouncing this no good this is a fake out stay away stay away stitch fix no good uh, let me check on some Oops. travel Boeing's doing good how are the cruise lines cruise lines ooh, interesting somewhat little consolidation there ooh. above our level Not ready yet, needs to be above 25. All right. American high beta. Not ready yet. Well, geez, Boeing's going. What's the other GE? What's this stupid stock has done a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> Whole lot of nothing. 
Can't get excited here. Sorry. I had Sonos, this one. Yeah, this one not looking great at all. I would uh, not be in this. I have, this was the last entry. One, two, three tags. But yeah, you don't want to be around this guy. If it below 30, it looks sketchy. Man. Oh, today, Monday, we had, uh, how did the, um, what was it? Box office sales too? Oh, it was, it was bad, right? Nothing right here on that. AMC. Why? See, like, what is this? This is dumb. Why, why would GameStop be going up here? 186. I want an alert here. I don't have to trade that. <clears throat> and what were we, some of the guys were talking about pen. So taking a look, more consolidation, not ready for a trade. No. Maybe soon. Not quite. Need over. <sighs> Definitely need, need to be well over 75. Two sketch. Rough Kings. Bouncing. It's an alert for 50. So football season's here. The only hope that these guys have. Nice levels though. Start we saw just real quick. So Coinbase is on the other list. Okay, so Coinbase 260, that's a 5% move on the day. That's cool. That's crypto. End phase. Oh. Bill.com. This is uh this goes in that finance. Hang on, it's not quite there yet. Baba. 166. It's getting close. Well, this guy could totally go to 180. But after that. Probably have some trouble. So I'll watch it around 170. I'll have to chug it away. Uh, nothing else is super bullish. You can keep Asana on watch. This looks decent. I don't need to jump out at it. This is that 105 level that we were looking at. Yeah, set some alerts. Pioneer. I think that's it. XOP Unity 138. Man, this Unity thing just, just moves so much every day. How's snow doing? Nope. No time for snow. So if I had some good headlines. resistance Let's see Amazon 
Yeah, I'm a little bearish on Amazon right now. This would be good cover calls territory for me. 32.22. There's a good premium to be had on this guy. We'll see. Ouch. All right. That's it for me, man. Yep, same here. Adios, guys. Um, we have, so, we got a couple of earnings. Probably, this is like preseason. Totally sent it. We got JP Morgan, BlackRock, Delta tomorrow that we'll go over. Um, Wednesday, we have the actual earnings trades in Zoom. And then we'll come back instead of the morning after, we'll just come back on the, the afternoon after, uh, review how the trades went, and then see if we have something else to put on. And we're good. Cool? Yep, yep, yep. All right, man. Take it easy. All right, see ya. See ya. Thank mm -hmm. you.